live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I have another fantastic guest here today. It's actually a good friend of mine. I've been trying to get him on the podcast for a long time. And a little bit of a, a bio so you guys can get to know him. Uh, Derek and his training with programs have helped students attract thousands of qualified leads and sales through live events, online training, and coaching. But it wasn't always this way for him. Uh, he was a broke college student uh, with 50K in debt and putting in long hours each day only to make nine bucks an hour at a concession stand. When he finally found a, working, uh, found a job working at a call center, he quickly learned he was meant for entrepreneurship when he received an 80 cent raise after being the top producer in the entire call center for six months straight. This lesson taught Derek that he needed to find a way out of the rat race now or he would be stuck in it forever. This is where he started his business and changed his life forever. Today, Derek has earned hundreds of thousands with a thriving business, amazing clients, and a dedicated team. And he's committed to helping entrepreneurs build their business using his simple, proven, heart-centered strategies. How are you doing, my friend? Lucas, dude, what's good? <laughs> this is sick. It's good to see you, bro. It's nice because I've been I've been on Zooms and calls all day, and uh, it's I took an hour break, ate some food, and like this is such a different vibe. This isn't like the traditional type of calls I have to do on a day to day basis. This is much more like laid back and chill. So like, I'm gonna take the chair, maybe pop it, pop it back just a little bit, get comfortable. That's what I'm saying, man. Relax. Man. Yeah, Normally I, I got good, a glass bro. of Merlot with me. You know, like the last guest was like, "Do you really drink that much Merlot?" And I just pull the glass and I just like, "It's already ready, dude." It's, it's, we're out here. <laughs> Yo, let's go. That's funny. We, we just ran an event and we got all this wine for our team. And we had like four extra bottles and we were about to leave the Airbnb. And I was like, no one's taking these. And I just grabbed like four bottles that are downstairs. So you bring one point. Maybe I'll have a glass tonight. Yeah, we will. We will. Uh, so, I mean, shoot, man. Like, I guess first things first, how you been? How's life? Life's great, man. Life's great. So, yeah, out here in Florida. Um, it's funny, actually, this weekend that we just had, uh, we ran an event with my company, so we had a bunch of people that were flying in all around the country, a few from uh, outside the U.S. as well, some from Europe and so forth. Um, so we did that, probably 200 plus people that was in uh, one of the hotels near my house that we ran. Um, so like I've been the last couple of days, like all in, just speaking, just pouring into people that came from all over the country and the world. Uh, and then Sunday was like rest day. I got to relax. Um, I, was, I was joking my fiance, Kayla, how one of the nights I got home by like 930 and I was in bed at 10 p.m. And for me, like, I'm a late night guy. Like, I stay up late. I'm like a night owl. I'll be like up to like 2, 3 and wake up around like 9, 9.30. Dude, I went to bed at 10. I was asleep by 10. And then I woke up at 8.30 a.m. And I was like, did I just sleep for 10 and a half hours? And I was zonked, like out cold. And it was just so good to just feel rested, feel centered. So now I'm like, I'm ready to attack the week. I feel great. I feel it, man. When you start to skimp on sleep, life goes down real fast yeah bro can't do it and so were you referring to your company um market hackers yeah yeah so essentially what what we have is we have a, a company that that we rock where um I, I started market hackers i was the, the big sign behind me um and what we do is is we build these communities of people that use different products in in the marketplace and uh, different affiliate products and a ton of different financial products which we can go into on the call if we want um yeah. and one of the companies that we uh, partner with is a company called Aborea Prime, which has these really unique trading uh, technologies, these softwares that trade in the markets. And so we uh, essentially have a partnership where uh, they do a lot of the operations and the events and setting that stuff up. And then we brought a ton of the volume and the business and the community of users and subscribers that pay for their services. So we have like a, a joint partnership essentially Got it. Uh, Got with it. that. And so they just were running a phenomenal event. And uh, yeah, that's essentially what we were doing. And so Correct me if I'm wrong, but these are tools to break down the market and see trends. Yeah, essentially, essentially, it's kind of crazy. So, like the when you bring up the idea of like trading in general, if you don't know that space, which I didn't three years ago, people are going to be like, "What even is trading? What are you talking about?" And sort of like with right. music, right? Like it's not just music. There's different genres, right? There could be EDM, there could be hip hop, there could be lo-fi, there could be reggae, all those different styles. So like trading, it's the same thing, right? Like crypto has been a huge buzz. People talk about crypto all day. That's just one area. You can trade stocks. You can trade tons of different things. Um, what we spend a lot of time is the foreign exchange markets. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's trading different currency pairs. And yeah. what, what we noticed, and this is what makes us really different from any, if you've ever seen some douchebag next to a Lamborghini claiming he can give you a million dollars in a day, all the BS you see online. Um, Everybody and their grandma's trying to sell you their... Exactly. Exactly, dude. And what we like to say is we bring maturity to an immature industry. 
And the reason why is because when I first looked at this space, I saw it five years ago and for two years wouldn't even give it a look or a second glance because of that exact thing. The marketing everywhere just pulled me away and I didn't know too much about it. Um, but what I began to find is there's a lot of ways you can actually make money in Forex. That's not what people think. Most people think that how you make money in trading Forex is learning how to trade, meaning you have to go, you have to take classes, you have to learn online, you have to pay for some course online, you got to watch YouTube videos, and you yourself have to go enter a trade, set when the trade will hit a profit, your right. stop loss to manage your risk, watch the trade, close out, run technical analysis, look at charts. So people think that's what trading is. And what happens is most people just are not ever going to be successful doing that, even myself. Yeah. I don't even manually trade that much. And I've been in the space for years. Um, and that's because we're busy, dude. Like we got shit to do. We have busy lives. We have lots of things going on, but there's technologies in the space called EAs and they stand for expert advisors. And what they are is they're computer files that are programs and they have different types of coding and algorithms. And what you can do is, is you can take these files and you can drag them and drop them onto different pairs in the markets. And the actual file, when it's dragged into a pair, We'll start trading in the markets based off that algorithm and it will literally open the trades based off when it believes is the right time and close the trades in a profit or in a loss so literally all you all have to do is yes and all you have to do is monitor it adjust your risk adjust your your parameters and then it does what it does in the markets so like when i found that i was like yo that right. is what i like and that can help a lot of people but what we did was we realized that there's so many different ones out there. It's kind of like finding a four leaf clover, or like a needle in a haystack. Tons of people claim they have good ones, but out of every maybe a hundred, there's like five that are actually legit. And so we spent like years split testing, running all these different um, back tests and linking accounts and trying to find the best ones. And that's what's happened over like the last three years. We have a few pieces of technology that we've been running. And we have like my mom, for example, my mom literally has an account that in the last maybe like 60 days has made her three grand on her income nice. or on her, on her, uh, on her account. And she doesn't trade at all. Doesn't know what's going on. Doesn't have an understanding of it, but I just showed her how to run the account. Not very risky. Make sure it's conservative. Showed her the settings to set. And then it just does its thing. And then all she has to do is just watch it from time to time, monitor it from time to time, make sure that the amount of money in the account matches the risk, which is just numbers we tell you when you get involved. You go, oh, you have that much you can put in, 500 bucks? Well, that's the risk you're going to want to do. You have you know, right. 100,000? That's the risk you want to do. And that's basically the, the gist of it. And the last piece before I pass it back to you is what also makes us different is we don't uh, take your money. A lot of these companies, it's like they're trying to like solicit investments where, you know, oh, you give me your $1,000 you want to trade, and then I'm trading your money. This is not that. You have your own account that you control, that you have pure security and ownership on. We don't have any of that. You can send money. You can withdraw money. None of us can connect with that. You can even run a demo account with test money that's not real. The only thing that we make money on is just the monthly subscription, the like $110 a month that you pay for the actual software. So you just pay, you know, 100 plus bucks a month for the software. And then you could put in a million bucks, you could put in a hundred bucks and that's all you that you control. And that gives people a lot of freedom because then they don't have this worry that, you know, uh, tomorrow they can have someone, you know, take all their money from them. You have the full control and security, just like a bank account that you would normally yeah, yeah. have. No doubt. And so do you guys have some pretty consistent returns on the automation? Is that oh, pretty across the board? Like yeah, it's disgusting. Like we literally have people that will be averaging 6% a month, 8% a month, 10% a month. And they have for years, like years. Okay. And that's, I mean, that's what's so wild for people because you look at like the real estate market, which is crazy right now, or uh, traditional like 401ks or like S and P 500, things like that. Just those traditional types of investments. You'd be lucky if you did six to 10% in any given year. Right. right. But with the softwares that we use, you know, what I'll do is actually, uh, do I, I can, uh, if you let me be co-host, yeah. I'll share, I'll share my screen while we're on okay, here. here. Give you, I'm uh, not sure how to make you go oh, to here you go. more yeah, you three little okay. dots. Make a, make a host. Okay. Yeah. You can make me a co-host or a host and I'll show you just as an example. So let's see, let me go into one of our groups. So we have a couple Facebook groups. All right, cool. So I'll share my, my uh, screen. So, so check this out. So. This is one of our Facebook groups. This group has like, I think 7,000 users. 
So what, what this group is meant to do is just to show people trading results. It's not meant to be hype. It's not meant to like overexcite people. It's just meant to show people pure results of the products mm -hmm. so they can see an unbiased view of what people have in the markets. So people just come in here and they share their trading results and then they can get involved. So let's see, let me find one as an example. So, all right, so we'll check out this one because people are posting these things all the time. So like, okay, so this person's account, if you look, let's see me. Okay, so it's loading one second. So what these are called, they're called MyFX books. Is it look dark for you? Uh, it's a little, yeah, it's a little dim. It, it's it dim. Was white. It was lit before and- There we go, there we go. Okay, so like this person, if you look in here, like this person's account has ran from April of 2021 to- july of 2021 and this person's done 199 percent on their account which is very very aggressive so this person's running a really aggressive account you can see how it's slowly been growing over a certain period of time so he shares that that uh account in this group and these are unbiased results you can't change these you can't adjust these it's just mm -hmm. pure results that can't be tampered with so you'll find here different people that share how their software has been running and everyone can run their software differently like this person, for example, they've done 87% on their account and they've ran theirs from uh, May 9th up until now. So again, a pretty aggressive account. Um, and you can choose kind of the risk that you want to set for your account. So some people, they want it really aggressive. They want to watch it. They want to tweak it. They want to always be looking at it. And other people, they don't want to have something as aggressive. They want to have something that's kind of set it and forget it product that they can just run in the background like my mom. Those ones... Those do here, like this is a perfect example. So this one, let's see. Um, okay, so I just lost it. Um, so one of these ones, as an example, has done around 6% a month for a solid year. But the piece that you want to see is the drawdown. So like the drawdown is what's really exciting. And what drawdown stands for is, is basically the amount of risk that the account had to take in order to make the money that it's made. So you want to find accounts that don't have a ton of high drawdown, but we're able to make a very good return with, with the, uh, the software. And so mm -hmm. like, if you were to look at, let's say my mom's account, my mom's account, actually I'll go in and show you because I can go in and uh, access my mom's account in here. So my mom's account, as an example, I'll link this and we'll go to, let's see, portfolios. So I believe this is the one. This is a perfect example. And again, my mom has no experience trading in the markets, doesn't know what she's doing. So my mom's account, she started it around March 19th and she's ran a very conservative account. So it did one and a half percent in April, it did 3.93%. Uh, and then in May, let's see. So in May, it went all the way up and has gone up to $15,767. Now the drawdown has been no more than 13.8%. So at no point did she risk more than 13% of her account to be averaging almost 6% in a month. And just to give you kind of perspective on how much you can earn from that, just in the month of, let's see, to, this is August. So if I go back just in the month of July, for example, because uh, my, or sorry, in June, because my mom and her friends, they came out to visit where I was at. So I'm going to show you just in the month of June, what she was able to do. And I'm going to actually screen share on my phone really quick. So, so check this out. So, all right. All right. So you should be able to see this from my phone. There we go. Okay. So, so just in the month, again, that $15,000 account. So if I go just June 1st, to July 31st, we'll just go from there, example. So if you look where it says profit, $2,552, right? On a, on a 50, uh, so that, yeah, that was in the month of June. So if I go back, okay. I'll go, so I'll go, I'll go June 1st oh, okay. to June 31st, okay? And then, okay, so, so $2,279. So this was just in the month of June alone. And that was on a $15,000 account. So that right there, just in that month, that did around, geez, I don't know the exact math on that, but that's probably like close around, to 
to like nine, nine, ten percent. Yeah, it's even higher. Um, but but the whole the whole point that I'm trying to make this, I'm not trying to ramble through all these results, is um, we realize in the trading space that rather than people trying to make crazy, crazy returns, it wasn't about how much money you can make, it's about what you can do long term consistently. So we built these communities of thousands and thousands of people who just make a little bit extra money a month than what they're normally getting in their bank account, right? Your banks are going to do what? Half a percent a year if you're lucky, maybe 0.01% a year if you're lucky. Yeah, it's a joke. And so even print that and use it as like a marketing move. I'm like, dude, there's nothing nothing, nothing to brag about this here. No, no, it's terrible. So yeah, Lucas, so that's the idea. So we have people... You know, you don't take all the money you own, just whatever you're comfortable with. You know, it could be $500 at first. It could be a thousand bucks. And then you watch the product work. It could be no money. You could use a fake account called demo accounts where you use pretend money as if it were real to watch how it would work if you did put real money in. So we give people zero risk. Um, and that's one thing you're that right. we can talk about too is building a, business, building a business predicated on results first. You know, because I've been in the space where I was in businesses where people are trying to promise the world to everyone without even showing any results on what they can do. And I realized you're going to get way more business, even to make long term, if you show your results first and be transparent. That way, you're not pushing people to join you; you're pulling them to you. Yeah, it's sort of like the, you know, I'm not a big uh, fan of doing like hard sales. Like I, I like yeah. the product and the service to pretty much sell itself. And so I personally have come to find out when yeah. somebody's trying to like really sell something before, like you said, you've seen the results and you've been you've been sold the right way as opposed to somebody trying to push you over the edge to just 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 make that leap you know just pull out that credit card and mm-hmm. th- honestly that's a problem yeah and the how to make money online industry because like 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 yeah. you said like everybody's a guru everybody has a book everybody has a course yeah. everybody is killing it in life and nobody can do any wrong and here yeah. you are being sold basically like you said just this ridiculous dream and oftentimes they don't tell you that 99 percent of everybody fails miserably using their system yeah they just focus on two or three people that sometimes are fake people create some like you know fake testimonial and start to make these videos online but eventually they get exposed yeah uh and that's the one thing actually i mean after kind of feeling like hearing some of the things you were saying i was realizing that we could take this conversation to so many different places Probably. Uh, personally Aside, I, I could talk business all day, but I think one thing that's very interesting that stands out about you to me is that you seem to very much understand how to create a personal brand. And sure. so I, I'm going to take a wild guess that aside from you being well aware on how to grow your business, that you're well aware that your personal brand is probably one of the most important things for you to build. Yeah. Um, yeah and for so sure. I, I, let's go into that. Like, What's your, what's your take on that? Like, do you, do you have like any strategies that, you know, help you position yourself in a better place? Yeah, do totally. endeavors and all that. Well, to kind of like to piggyback on what you just said, one of the big things that I feel like it separates people that build influence online from people that build manipulation online. So I'll make sure you kind of caught that, right? Like manipulation versus yeah. influence online. You can manipulate someone online to buy something from you or to, or to believe in you or whatever, um, or you can influence someone. And like my intent is to always influence people because I've been influenced by people in my life. I've also been manipulated by people in my life. And I know the difference from when I was manipulated to do something and when I was influenced, right? When someone influences you, the idea is that they're, they're inspiring you to make a positive decision. So one thing for me, Lucas, that has helped me build, I feel like at least more influence rather than manipulation is I am in no way at all afraid to share all of my failures. I have no, um, I have no uh, barrier or wall to share all of the mess ups, the fuck ups, the mistakes, the adversities, the long nights, the couch surfing, the being broke, the making it, then losing. I, I don't care because yeah. uh, one, I've learned like the people that I mess with the most online that I buy with are the ones that are willing to get vulnerable and share who they really are and all the difficult things they've gone through, um, as opposed to just trying to create an image that none of us are going to be able to actually fill. So like, if I look at my life right now, it could appear online like, oh yeah, like, you know, he's doing good shit. He's been to Dubai and Singapore. He's in Aruba with his girl, like just traveling the world. Yeah, I've, I've gone some awesome places. 
but I also know what it's like to have businesses completely fail in your face. Look at your bank account and be like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I don't have a college degree. I have student loans. I'm sleeping on my best friend's couch. Uh, you know, I got to figure out a skill set. So, you know, I think one thing with like the idea of like personal branding is like personal ownership and authenticity is like, are you willing to share everything online? And like one thing I always challenge people to do is if you were to make like, let's say a video, right? Um, and again, people use different content online. Some people play music like yourself. They share their music online. That's their way of like self-expression to the world. Some people use images, photos, whatever type of creative outlet, art. For me, I've done a lot of video. So it's been video, it's been, you know, images, things like that. Um, but as an example of video, if you were to make a video and just be so real and just be like, oh, you know, I just got fired from my job or like, oh, I just found out like my mom's in the hospital, like just some heavy, real stuff in life. What you'll find is because it takes vulnerability to share that online because you don't know who's seeing it. Right. That also requires courage. And there's so many people online right now that are consuming, right? We're consuming these computers. And because we're consuming these virtual computers, you're either going to be a consumer or a producer. And when you see people that are willing to produce, not just to act a certain way, but to just use it as a platform to be vulnerable, what it does is it subconsciously gives other people permission to do that as well. And that takes courage to do that. Yeah, yeah. And that, sure. builds, that builds influence. So if people realized getting vulnerable about your own failures, mistakes, insecurities, mental health, anxieties, all those things, if you can get real with that and share that with people, you'll actually create more influence as long as you're working tirelessly at your craft and your passion, whatever that is, right? And, right. and for me, you know, it's interesting with social media. Uh, when I was, I'm 29 now, so in my 20s, I put a lot of effort into building um, my social media, like Instagram and Facebook and these platforms because they were directly tied with how I made money. So yeah. I needed to build those social media platforms and, and share more of myself in order to create an income for myself. Now it's very different because I have businesses that create income for me, dependent or independent from my social media presence. You know, I could, right. I could be ghosted for three months on my Instagram, um, but yet people are still engaged with either my content or what I'm doing, or they're in my DMS, but it doesn't affect my income because I built business from it. So, you know, I, I actually think it's important that sometimes people take a break from it, man, because you have to know how to audit. Like one thing I've been really trying to push myself to do is I always go to bed in airplane mode, trying to wake up, not going directly to my phone. Cause when you wake yeah. up in the morning, your brain is, it's like the same uh, chemical release that you have as a child, that same brain function of your behaviors. And so your brain is super vulnerable to information and intake. And the first thing you do is you roll over and you see a post on Instagram of your friend who just, you know, achieved something that makes you feel insecure. Even if normally at like 4 p.m. you saw that you kind of, oh, good for him and treat it differently. You could then feel a different way the whole day and not yeah. know that your behaviors were shifted by one little thing. So, yeah. you know, and That's the other the reason why I don't, I don't follow anybody on, on Instagram. People That's think it's like me trying to be like, well, I mean. People sometimes think it's like me trying to be cool, like I don't follow anybody, but it's no. really like what you it's what you said, which is yeah. when you understand that you cross over the line of being a producer, like truly producing, I, for the lack of a better word choice, content, but yeah. stuff that like really makes people look forward to, like you're creating your own brand, your own network, so to speak. Um, yeah, dude, it's, I mean, the way I see it is like having, having like a pop in Instagram is having like a pop in resume nowadays. Yeah. Like, uh, that the amount of uh, business that I've gotten, like, I'll tell you this, I've, I've spoken with like females and let's just say they're like kind of interested or whatever, but then they go to your Instagram and then they become really interested. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a, it's a currency, like, or you don't have an Instagram and then they think you're weird. And so there's like that, that middle ground where you're like, yeah. if, you should utilize these tools because you can, no matter what you do in life, yeah. you're going to benefit from it one way yeah. or another. Yeah. And, so and it's, it, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope too. Right. Because it's like, you, you bring up a really valid point. It's like, you know, you can have currency in, in this, in the sense of your social platforms, but you like you, like you don't follow people because 
why are you going to want to spend all of your time consuming other people's information, right? You want to focus on your craft, what you're doing, what you're building. And on top of that, it's like, that's a great point about like females, right? Like, oh, a female can see your Instagram and judge you based off your Instagram and vibe with you. Well, that also is going to tell you what girl not to mess with. Because if you're going to yeah. you know, like a girl that only likes you based off your Instagram, that's a shallow ass person that's, to have, that's to have in your life. Not a person you want to be involved with. No, no, not um, at all. Absolutely. And the other thing too that I would say about uh, Lucas, what you said with your account and like not following a ton of people, you know, if you make the decision that you're using these, these different social media platforms as tools, because that's all they really are, right? They're tools. To some people, they're not. To some people, they're forms of media, right? As in, they're just like you have a television, it's, it's a media outlet to consume content for escapism, for whatever reasons. And we all have our vices. I get it. Um, but if you decide you're using it to produce content, to influence people and to increase your life and grow your business, and it's not meant just to socialize with people all day, you know, the real friends in your life, the real people that, that vibe with you and care about you, you following them or unfollowing them or being with them on Instagram won't matter because you'll be calling each other. You're talking to each other. Right. You're seeing them in person. You have those friendships. Those yeah. friendships mean way more than the, the social media, right? Um, but, but, you know, one thing I will say that helped me when I was building my, my platforms, I really struggled with content in, in regards to like, how to break out the content that I'm posting, how to, how to create um, content in a way where it was getting people engaged with who I am as a person, but also trying to lead them down a direction to make a decision to buy from me. And one thing that helped me was, was breaking down the content I posted into four categories. So one is a story, two is a, is a result, three is a question, four is an invitation. So what that means is, is one is like the story. I could, for example, take a, um, uh, I could, let's say my, my cat got sick. I could post a story of like my cat again, cause I have two cats with my fiance. I could post a story of like my cat not feeling good. And we just went to the vet and now she's doing better. It's random, but it, it allows you to get to know me. There's no real point to it. Just sharing an element of my life. Uh, you know, we went to a steakhouse and we had great service. You share a story online. The whole point of it is not to influence people to do anything. It's to build trust with people so they get to know you more, right? right. So the next one would be, let's say, like a result post, right? A result-driven post. These posts are designed to subconsciously create a level of like expertise in your field. So for example, I could screenshot this, this podcast call and I could post, you know, thanks, Lucas, for hosting me on your podcast. Appreciate the love, man. Uh, we went blah, 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 blah. We crushed it. It was awesome connecting with you, brother. Boom. So now I share that and what people see go, Oh, he got featured on a podcast. Oh, That's kind of legit. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it, it just cut off for a split second. Oh, we're good. Perfect. Okay, cool. Just let me know. Um, so they would go, oh, he got like featured on a podcast. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I spoke on stage this weekend. So I'll get some images from the photographer of me on stage. I could post a photo of me on stage going, had a blast at the event. Had so much fun seeing people from all over the world. Can't wait for the next one. Well, they see me speaking. They go, Damn, that's legit. Like you could be, you know, doing music in front of like 300 people, right. had a fun time in Miami, loved doing that set. It was sick. All right. I can't wait that's for the next one. Credibility. Social credibility, a result driven post. Then yep. the third is like a question. This is curating engagement. That's all this is meant for. It could be something to go like, you know, uh, like, oh, should Simone Biles, you know, withdrawn from the Olympics thoughts with like question mark. And it's just meant to get people talking back and forth. No, that was yeah. BS. What do you mean? She has to protect her mental health. Just creating questions, curiosity, because on these platforms, they're run by businesses that operate in algorithms, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. right? And those algorithms matter. Um, and when you have more engagement, those algorithms rank you higher. And then the last would be an invitation. And these invitations would be like the left hook, right? The, the real ask where you're like, Going, you know, hey, you know, over the last year, I've been fortunate to do blank, 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 X, Y, and Z. This week, I'm going to bring in, you know, 10 more people into my business. I'm going to mentor these people to do blank, blank, and blank. If you think that's you, drop a seven in the comments. Like that's a direct ask, a direct invitation for someone to do something. So what I tell people is don't just post invitation like content every single day or else they're going to think you're a sleazy salesman. Don't post stories every single day or they're, they're going to think you're like your grandma just telling stories on social media all day. Don't post just results of your life all day because it's going to seem like you're snotty and all you're trying to do is invest in yourself. Just flexing. Yeah. And then don't post questions all day because you're going to seem like you don't have confidence because you're wanting other people's opinions all day. <laughs> Ver create variations of this and, and create different forms of this. So maybe on Monday you drop a result and then maybe on Thursday you drop a question. Maybe next Tuesday you drop an invitation. You vary it with those different things. Yeah. And what happens is people, what I, I call it, they grow an affinity to you, 
right? They feel like they're getting to know you because they're seeing different elements of your life. And that's, that's a grind. So that's what I did for years. And, and now, you know, I'm at a point where like, for example, if we're trying to hit business goals, I can go into my friend requests and I'll have 700 pending friend requests. And I can just search through the people go, Oh, this person looks cool, accept their friend request. And they go, Oh, this person has 14,000 people that follow them on Facebook. And I immediately have credibility. And then I just strike up a conversation, meet them on the phone, share with them what I'm doing and see if I can help them. Word. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I like what you said earlier in regards to, well, one, being more, more on the vulnerable side where you're not just always sharing all of your highlights and killing it in life because, you know, I've, I've been guilty of that too. I mean, I can't think of too many times where I'm putting myself out there in like a bad light, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there is huge power in showcasing the downfalls. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm a believer that there is no way to get to where you want to get and be and become unless you go through those failures. It's yeah. just physically impossible. Uh, there, if you don't have friction in life, you will not grow. Yeah. Uh, you're not gonna, you're not going to level up. And so I saw, I was reading that article, um, the Yahoo article about you, and it talked about how, like, on your first two weeks, you lost like 25k trading. Yeah, yeah, it was Tell me about rid that. ridiculous, man. So when I, when I got into this space, I I was running a software that it was, remember I told you how it's like a needle in a haystack. So there's a ton of people that say they have softwares, but right. there's really only rare ones that actually work. So I was connecting with some guy um, who called himself Quicksilver. That's what he, that was his like, his code name. And he claimed to be like some Wall Street dude, all this stuff. And I, I didn't know the space yet. I was still young. And he was showing me these accounts that were doing like 50% returns a month, 60% returns a month. I was like, this is crazy. Um, but here's what I always tell people. One, how long has the account been running for? And what's the max risk that it is done? All these accounts had only been running for like three weeks, right? So like for us, we have accounts that have two years of data. They've been running for two years, two and a half years, a year. And you see, oh, that year account never risked more than this amount. So you can have a better view. So at this point, I didn't know that. So, oh, this, this is sick. This one's only been going for two weeks. Look how much money it's made. It's been 60%, 80%. So I set up an account with maybe like 10 grand uh, and then uh, ran the account. And in like three weeks, it went from like 10 grand to like 17 grand. And I was like, this is crazy. So I loaded back up. I added like another uh, 8,000 bucks. So I had like 25 grand in it. And then I was in, um, I was in Seattle, I think, Seattle or LA, I don't remember. And I was flying back to Florida and my account was up like $3,000 in, uh, in a matter of like, I don't know, an hour when I woke up that morning. It was like, this thing's growing. And I get on my flight. I land in Florida and I open my account once I get off the Wi-Fi and I'm negative $9,000 in floating drawdown, which means it hasn't closed. So I didn't lose the money yet, but it was like negative. It could go back up and I could be in profit or it could keep going down. And I looked at it and went, that's not good. Okay, well, I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to let it ride. I think it's going to go back up. It's pretty, pretty low. I'm going to let it go back up and wait. And then I went to bed and the next day I look, account's gone, blew the account, lost it all. And I was like, no, like that's terrible. Oh my gosh. And I felt so, felt so detracted. Uh, at first, but the thing was, is I saw, wow, I made 25 grand or I lost 25 grand in like a night. I thought, well, geez, if I would have just been on the opposite side of that trade, I would have made 25 grand in a night. And it really opened my mind and thought, well, geez, if I could lose that money that quickly, if I can do this right, maybe I can make that money that, that quickly. And it right. taught me, it taught me a really valuable lesson. And so since then we created these clear parameters on how to actually track and monitor products in the markets that can really help people and work and then to assess the risk. See what I didn't know, Lucas was on that 25 grand account. I was running settings on that 25 grand account as if it should have been like a $300,000 account. So I was so risky and I didn't know I was so risky. I was running the 25 grand, like it was 300 grand because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and now those same strategies have, have built uh, a, a whole business where the, that income is, it's all good. I'm not, I don't sweat on that because it's right. made so much more since then. And we've figured out how to do it the right way long-term. Yeah, man. I mean, you're totally right though, because most people look at this type of line of work or this industry as this, this sort of vast world that they, it's complicated numbers and stuff like that. And sure, in some ways it definitely is. 
it, it can be, you, you can try to make it all complicated and whatnot, but I've seen a shift in the industry of trading in general that goes mm. for all kinds where they're really trying to make it simple. They're trying yeah. to just simplify things. And I just recently got in the game just this last year as far yeah. as stocks. So I'm brand new in the game, but I was aware that you were already involved within the last couple of years. So I've been keeping my eye on it. Yeah. Um, and I'm definitely going to look into it a little bit more. Uh, once yeah. We call. Yeah, we'll do a call but, later and I'll show you. Yeah, some stuff. no doubt. We'll do some, some stuff off the off the record. But aside from that, do you, are you involved with anything? Because uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you also have a very strong presence in your content as like inspirational. Yeah. So is that like a big component of your, your branding and, and like where things are going for you? Yeah. I have a couple of other projects. Like one thing is I have, I have an e-commerce business as well. So I have a, I have a, a store on Amazon that lists different products and sells it uh, through Amazon. That's done um, about 2 million in revenue over the last uh, two years that nice. basically, yeah, I have a, have a group of virtual assistants that manage the store out of the Philippines and basically list different products and scale that. Um, and that's a really unique business because uh, it helps build your credit score because uh, essentially you're going to list products on Amazon. People see those products, they buy it on Amazon. Amazon uh, gets you paid, but you have to then go purchase those products on other suppliers at a wholesale value, which is what the virtual assistants do. So they then go buy these products on Walmart or uh, Wayfair. Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba, um, which you put on a credit card. And then when Amazon pays you, you pay off the card and then you get a little bit of a profit split, right? Gotcha. Well, as you're, as you're scaling that store month to month to month, there's more and more money going on your credit card that you then get a pay. That builds your credit, right? right. And it also does is that gives you points. So literally today, my fiance is planning our elopement. So we're not doing like a big traditional wedding. We're just doing an elopement, just her and I together. Um, and she was able to book our flights to Bora Bora. We're getting eloped and was able to use just half of my credit card miles on my points just for the entire round trip to Bora Bora. And that's because I have a business that just generates um, points for, for yeah. yeah. And, and then I can just use that for different things, travel, whatever. Um, but in, in the inspiration space, what I did was is – I've, I've built teams over the last like nine years. I spent a lot of time figuring out how do you create systems to influence people to uh, personally grow and build businesses and scale groups of people that are all essentially using some type of product or service together, which normally requires me to pay for it every month. And how do you help those people make enough money every month where they make more than enough money to cover their expense each month so they don't have any expenses and potentially more profit? So as an example... If I were to say, hey, you know, if you can influence a thousand people to, to use these softwares, you could go make, let's say, 10 grand a month or 25 grand a month. But it's going to cost, let's say, $200 a month to qualify to do that. Well, if you go have a thousand people, you know, that are paying a subscription every month, unless the thing they're paying for actually helps them, like what we have is really good. But I've been in other companies and seen other things where the thing they're paying for, they're not that interested in. So they're not going to pay for it forever because people don't want to lose money every month. Right. But if you can help those people, make enough money every month that negates the cost of their expense. Yeah. Why would they ever stop paying for something that has no overhead, right? Exactly. Like if you're a starter, if you're a starter restaurant that costs you five grand a month to operate, and you're making six grand a month. You're not going to close up shop because you're, you, there's no point. So I've spent a long time building out systems that do that. So uh, one is a program I created called Ascension, which is essentially a, it's how to basically scale an organization and create a lucrative business where people are motivated, creating incentives for them. Just how to scale groups and teams of people all around the world to produce, not by you being their boss, but by you serving them, pouring into them, loving on them, wanting them to do the best, wanting to bring out the best in them um, and just grow large teams. And that comes from everything to how to run events, how to sell, how to um, actually write scripts to formulate the process to influence people to get involved in your businesses. Like, yeah. like, you know, like one piece of game, if you will, like people don't realize this, but in order to influence people to make a choice to do something like to spend money, you have to walk them through three questions in pretty much any industry. And if you can get them to answer these three questions in this order, they will subconsciously go from being skeptical about, about what you do to wanting to get involved. And those three questions are one, does it actually work? Two, why is it working if it does work? And three, how, how can it work for me in my life? And if you think about like anything you've ever done, you probably went through those same things. You saw something, didn't know if it worked, then realized it did work, but didn't know why it was working or, or what it was doing, learned more about it, learned why it was happening. And then the last thing was, 
How can it benefit me? How could it work for me? And so I built a sales process around walking people through that. Does it work? Why does it work? How can it work for me? And helping people walk them through that process. So is this a, is this a course? Yeah, it's a course. Uh, so it's a program. It's also a, like a physical book. So it's like a, a book. It's like an actual like book of infographics. It's uh, it's actually um, I have my camera on, but it's this would be my my scripts, uh, and then this over here would be my course as well, which you could probably find on my website. Um, and I'm re-updating some of the content right now. But that was one thing I brought in because I just look back and I'm like, well, how did I do some of that stuff? So I just drafted up and turned it into a program as well, just to give people the the help. That's awesome, dude. And this actually gives me an idea, and we'll. We can chat about it later after the interview because um, I'm building a course as we speak. And oh, a lot of the information yeah. overlaps with the stuff that you've been talking about. It's essentially like a, a quick guide on how to be proficient and have an on online business. Sure. So people can actually take you seriously because there's like a lot of like something as simple as this. Us having mm -hmm. this call. How many times do you hop on the call and the person's audio and video is shit? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Have like a full on meeting with you. <laughs> And it's, not happen. it's simple things, right? Simple things. Yeah. And it, 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 it hit me and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like where we're going with, with life and technology and businesses, mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities for people to just come in, own a little pocket of information, be the person, the go-to person brand or whatever, and just, just knock it out. Like yep. grow yeah. into that, that space. And I guess fill me in on, on your take on this because I'm a per personally, I'm a, I'm a believer on going head, head, head in and just going all out, like really going for it in a way where there is no B plan. Like, mm. sure, you have a B plan, but you know what I mean? Like, there's the A plan and that's it. Like, I'm going for it. Yeah. Um, is that kind of how you go about it when it comes to your businesses and certain ventures? Bro, it's so funny because it's like I advise people to try and have like a plan B or not a plan B, but essentially like, like, okay, let's say you have your plan A, which is like your passion, but your passion isn't paying you full time yet to just do. I advise people to have something that's paying you that maybe you don't love, but it covers your rent, covers your bills, puts food on your table, even if it's tuna and top ramen, whatever, so yeah. that you can then be working on your main thing. Yeah. And that's what I tell people. And then I look back at like my own life. And when I was, uh, when I had just turned 20, I dropped out of college. Uh, I still had a ton of debt and I just went all in on, on the business that I was building. Um, but I will say I didn't go all in on the business I was building with zero results. I had started to create results, right? So like if you're you know, playing a video game, like I wasn't on level one, like I got to like level four out of 10, you know, or level, level three out of 12. Like I had some progress, so there was an indicator that something was working yeah. um, and, and that gave me more confidence to make that transition, to take that leap out. So I, I think actually now that I, I think about it, Lucas, I would tell people don't just like if you do something you hate, you're going to um, create a narrative in your head, almost like a movie of like, screw the man. I'm going to go all in on my dreams and I'm just going to do me. I'm quitting my job. I'm just going to follow my passion but if there's no actual plan or no current results going, then it's just wishful thinking. Like you're just guessing yourself, tough, right? Yeah. 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 You have to have some type of results. So like, I don't know, maybe in the music industry, cause I'm not too familiar in that space, but like, you know, you have a certain amount of streams and now the streams are, are paying you a few hundred bucks a month. You got offered to, to perform at a, at a couple concerts. Uh, maybe yeah. you got offered to do a feature on someone's music and, and now it's starting to pay you maybe not a full-time income, but like almost close to like where it could cover your rent, you know, maybe not even just your rent. There is a, like in track when they, they're running, they pass the baton and they grab it and they keep, keep the motion moving. There's a fluid motion where you, you have to make that transition. You have to make that, that pass. And everyone's timing is different. Some people are able to just not even pass the baton, but just throw it. Some people don't have a baton. It just depends on the person. Um, but I do think you have to, at some point, or else you're never going to, you're never going to, and that's, you know, not a life worth living. You have to double down on the things that make you happy, but it, you have to see some type of evidence, like evidence that the system is working, evidence that things are going in the direction, because then that's going to give you more confidence to double down on it. So if you have a business 
or a passion or a thing you're working on and you're wanting to do it full time and you can't yet, what I would say is get creative on how you can create evidence for yourself and walk into that or find another way to create income for yourself that doesn't have you hating what you do so much. Because I'm, I would never knock a job. I think I, I understand a lot of people have jobs they love, you know. The only challenge when you do something for a living that you don't enjoy and it takes up half of your day, you're not going to be in a creative energy to manifest yeah. the, the things that you want, especially if you do like music, for example. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of my thoughts on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're totally right, man. And so it, I do want to be clear that you should play your cards right, like you said, which is you have the ideal scenario of what you're shooting towards, but then you're also making sure the basics are getting covered. Yeah. And I think that as long as you have that mentality, the basics are covered, you're, you have discipline to show up at a job that you don't necessarily like, uh, but you know that you're doing it for the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, that to me actually adds the awesomeness of life, which is sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think when you, when you truly sacrifice for something, that's when you gain love and respect for what you're doing because it matters to you. And there's also, there's nothing to be ashamed about working on your passion, but also working a, a traditional normal job that, yeah, that nothing wrong with that. income, you know, I, some yeah. people there's assholes, man. And they're like, Oh, you work a job. Like you can't control your time. It's like, no, whatever. I would much rather like, I would respect the person who has a passion that they're pursuing all in while simultaneously working something that maybe they don't love, but provides the income and security for them to pursue their passion in a creative state of being with a sound mental health. than the person who has a negative perspective of working a job. So they're going all in on their plan, but they're so stressed about money. They can't approach their plan a with a, the right frame of mind. Right. So they never get anything done. And then they end up failing. Like, you know, you know we, we can't be a society that just judges people based on, you know, their, their income or their employment or any of that, because we're yeah. all going through different shit, man. We're all at a different pace in this game. And, yeah. and if it starts working, then it's up to you to try and help other people bring them up also. Yeah, man. And, and so that kind of goes hand in hand with the aspect of like social media and like going in on your Instagram as soon as you wake up and seeing everybody mm -hmm. just killing it in life. And I think, yeah. well, I don't think at this point, I know the detriment that this has created on a psychological level, as far as for the younger people, oh, yeah. um, it's pretty detrimental because yeah. yeah, sure. You and I both know that these are actually tools and that how you, you are going to get out of that tool how you use it. So we are a reflection of the internet. So if you find yourself always fucking off in the internet and doing all kinds of shit that doesn't get you anywhere in life, well, the internet is not like that. You're yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and, and just as much on the opposite, you can use it and learn all kinds of information for free, basically, and use it as, a, as a, your own university. And so... It, there's there's definitely seems to be this fab of people wanting to be youtubers instagram influencers i mean i think actually in the united states this last year or two for the first time ever being a becoming a youtuber was higher than wanting to become a um, uh, astronaut and a doctor for kids that's so, that's so crazy and that's so crazy. We're, we're at that point now and so what's your take on how this whole scene is developing for when it comes to influencers and businesses and online businesses. Do you see this sort of taking a left turn? Do you feel like there's some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes down to the results that this is doing for people's mental health? Like, what do you yeah. think? My, my fiance and I talk about this a lot, actually, because when I first got into entrepreneurship, I was 20. So that was back in like 2013. Um, social media was not like it was today. It, back then, if you consistently made videos on YouTube, and I'm talking like twice a week, maybe upload them to Facebook and maybe a couple photos a week on Instagram, and that's all you did, you were going to get a ton of eyeballs, engagement. Um, you know, uh, you probably get known pretty quickly as long as you had somewhat engaging content. Um, now there's TikTok, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, there's Instagram, there's all these different things. And there's such a high demand for all of them too. Let me mute this real quick. There's such a high demand for all of them as well that you have to be, you know, like Kayla found out, my fiance, that like some people on TikTok, they're posting eight times a day, right? It gets yeah. to a point where you're realizing you're, you're in this, this loop or this game that probably could be a little destructive. And yeah. think of this too, right? You think of all these people that are wanting to be like YouTube famous or Instagram famous or things like that. So they're, they're desperately trying to create attention, likes, all these things. 
Well, when you, they're, they're trying to do what? They're trying to become a celebrity, right? That's what they want. Well, when you look at real celebrities, right? Like Hollywood celebrities, uh, musicians, artists, do they seem like they're desperately wanting to, to be known by everyone? No, it's the opposite, yeah, right? Often you, not, look, yeah. you look at people like Justin Bieber, he's like wearing a hat down low, wearing a hood. Like he's trying to escape the, the limelight because he's so well known. So yeah. I, I think that what, what's going to happen as, as time goes on is that there's going to be a, a subdivision where you're going to have people, because I will, I do believe this, I'll be of a very large group of these people that are desperately trying to get attention online. It's not that they want attention online as much as it is that they want to make money on their own terms. And in order to make that money, getting massive amounts of attention online is the vehicle to allow them to do that. Right. right. Um, and so they're going to ride that vehicle as hard as they can to create that. But I feel like the name of the game really is just creating independence financially for yourself so that you are, you control your, your terms. If you don't want to post for a month, you don't have to, if you want to post every hour of every day, you can. And I think that there's going to be a big divide. We're going to have people on one side that are so involved and invested on building a brand online that it almost consumes their mental health and they're going nonstop and they're just like crazy. And then you have another group that almost totally reject it. Like they're in their vans, they're traveling the country, they're getting fresh air, they're being present and they're trying to not you know, get as engaged in that world because it gets so ridiculous. Cause you have to remember, this is all being done by corporations. Like these are all yeah. massive corporations that are analyzing all of our data and all of our information. And they're monetizing our data to literally populate things on these apps to literally trigger our dopamine and our behaviors to make these decisions. And that's an addiction, just like cocaine, just like, um, just like caffeine, just like other things. The, the thing that helps me the most this is something that I, it took me a while to learn is levels of awareness, right? So what I, I call the three levels of awareness. So the first level of awareness, right? Level one is where you care about what everyone thinks of you, right? Like in high school, dude, I was super insecure, right? Like you were a stud right. in high school. I remember I was an insecure kid, man. I, I cared about what people thought of me. I, I wanted to dress a certain way. I wanted to look a certain way. I just was, I tried really hard to want to be cool because I was invested into the opinions of others, right? Then the second level of awareness is not caring what anyone thinks. So you kind of reject people's opinions to try and be more independent. But the truth is, is that you actually care even more. So I'll give you an example. If someone becomes, let's say like really goth, right? Or like really emo, or they identify as one like thing, like maybe super like ghetto or hip hop or whatever it may be, they're actually trying to get attention through rebellion to act like they don't care what people think, right? right like right. They, they make their hair like pink. I don't care what people think, I'm gonna do me. No, you care so much what people think, you're actually going to make yourself try and stand out and get attention because you want people to, to care about what you're doing even though you're putting it on a front like you don't care what people think. That's level two. Yeah. The third level is what I strive for, okay? This is the one that I push for all the time. The third one is the simple fact that no one is thinking about you in the first place because they're all too busy thinking about themselves. Right, right. No one is going more than four seconds a day. I wonder what Derek's doing today. I wonder what he's wearing today. I wonder what Derek ate today. I wonder how much money Derek is making right now. No, one's, no one is thinking about me like that. No one is yeah. spending all day thinking about me, just like no one may be spending all day thinking about you because they're all invested in their own lives. They have shit yeah. to do, right? They, no one's going, oh, I wonder what Derek's doing. Oh, wow, the Kardashians, right? We get distracted all day. We're doing different stuff. Yeah. That thought could be depressing. I think it's liberating. I think it's a liberating idea because when you realize no one's even really thinking about you in the first place, right? They're just yeah. living their own lives. It gives you permission to just be you and just express yeah. yourself in whatever capacity that is and not worry about people judging you or, or berating you or making you feel uncomfortable because they're going to forget about you in, in an hour and go eat their sandwich or go live their life or go back to work. So you know, it's like, we have to realize that people are not that invested in us because they're all invested in ourselves. It's just human nature in the end. hundred percent. I mean, you nailed it because and for the record, I was also uh, trying to impress people in high school left and right. And, <laughs> you know, you're the, you're the new you're kid, all the dances, school, man. You're Brazilian all the kid over here trying. I mean, that's actually the main reason why I even started JSL. I was just trying to be, you know, popular, just trying to yeah. like meet girls and hang out and party. And that's why I started. That was my first business. And that's yeah. actually, I think, how we were hanging around each other a good yeah. amount, yep. amount of time. Yeah. But 
Yeah, you're totally right, man. I mean, it comes to a point where I think the whole social media thing is a, is a delicate one because on a personal level, like we, we both pump out a good amount of content, it seems like. And on a personal level, I found out that, like you said, there's been a different aspects of the relationship I've had with social media. Uh, at, in the very beginning, I was consuming it more, more than anything than producing. Then it moved forward to trying to imitate other creators and try to look like them and be like them. Then it moves forward to you kind of finding your own groove. And mm -hmm. like you said, not giving a damn and just like, I'm just going to do what I got to do. And then it kind of falls full, full circle where you realize you do care. It's not that important. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't kill yourself over it. But it's cool to share your take on things and let people know cool things that you're up to, inspire them from time to time. And yeah. at least when you do post, you bring positivity to someone's life. You make them laugh. You make them feel good about the post. You make them totally. whatever, as opposed to, let me regurgitate what the Kardashians did last night. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where I think where the, the dopest content creators out there, they understand that, 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 that what you said, which is, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm dope on social media, but at the end of the day, I'm just a regular person. I got mm -hmm. dreams and aspirations like the next person who might not be popping on social media. Yeah. And I'm here like everybody else, just trying to make a, make a good life and hopefully inspire some people along the way. Um, and it seems like, I mean, it seems like you pretty much nailed it, dude. I mean, it, it, so far by talking to you, it feels like you're living the life that you wanted to live, that you've signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, man. My life has gotten a little bit more low key too. Like we had this, this awesome event, you know, and there's a ton of people there and I spoke on stage, I was all suited and all that looked cool, like on social media, but a lot of, a lot of my time is me working from home. Right. Um, you know, focusing on my health and my fitness, being with my fiance, um, hanging out with our cats, watching a movie, kicking it, yeah. drinking yeah. some wine, um, and just, just being present and, and having the peace of mind knowing like, you know, I built some things that allow me to live like this without having to do things that I don't want to do. And that, that was the big thing, man, you know, it was just wanting to control my environment and my time. Um, and, and part of my business, you know, there are with the, the software, you know, these, these trade softwares, we have 93% of the people that use these products are just customers, meaning they, they use the products, they don't tell a single person, and they just use it because they like it, right? They don't get paid on, on referring people, they just use it every single month. But there's this other, you know, seven to ten percent where they can earn by referring business. And I work with those people, I mentor those people. Like today, I do calls with people all through Europe and other countries and help them grow the business side. And that's that's fulfilling work as well because you're just helping people also be able to have that that freedom. Because I know what it's like, man, you know, just being in the grind and trying to find a way out and trying to have, you know, some exciting, excited feelings for the future and not having it and wanting to look forward to. And um, and it can be a scary feeling. But I think if we just double down on who we are, what makes us great, we all have that in us. If you haven't found it yet, like you've just got to do more soul searching with who you are, spend less time scrolling, more time just soul searching. And, you know, one thing or another, you'll get pulled into that passion and then you'll find a really good groove. And it has nothing to do with money, literally nothing to do with money. Money, in my opinion, is it, all it is, is an extension of you and your passion serving others, getting paid for that service you're rendering. Um, if that's something you're into, you know, and I know tons yeah. of people that make a lot of money that are super fulfilled. So it just depends on your passions, man. Yeah, man. And so I guess to uh, kind of close things off here, if you had a, a minute to give advice to anybody out there who is, is in that rut that you're talking about, that, that, that lifestyle that they seem to find themselves in, that they, they're not about it, they really want something better for themselves, what would you, what would you yeah. say to them? I'll close, I'll close on this, man. So this is the big thing I've realized. So it, it, it does double down on my products because I believe in these products that I have is that I can literally identify how to create freedom for someone financially in a, in a 20 minute call. And how I do that is I identify how much money they need every single month to do what they love. The, the, the whole coin of market acts in our business is helping people transition to do what they love full time. So that's, it, it, I didn't say help people make millions, right? I didn't say help people get a jet. I didn't say, you know, help people get a rolly. I said, do whatever it is that you love full time. So if you have something that you love to do, but you can only do it one day a week, nah, screw that. Let's get you doing that seven days a week because that's what you love. So we have products where we know, oh, you know, this could do six to 10% every single month for you on average, right? And, you know, past results don't predict the future, but based off of this history we've seen, you know, this is what it's looked like. So if you had, let's say, you know, a uh, hundred grand, boom, now you have an extra six to $10,000 in passive income coming in. What would you go do? And for most people, it's not that much money, right? Maybe they only need another thousand bucks a month. 
So figure out a plan for yourself, figure out your financials. Like how much do you spend every single month? How much do you make every single month? And if you don't have a vehicle to put that money into, to allow you to earn enough every month where you can do whatever you want to do on a full-time basis, that's okay, I guess, but it's just going to take you a lot longer to spend more time doing what you like. You know, like for me, I have the freedom at least to go where I want to go and live how I want to live and do the things I want to do. And that's because I figured out what that thermostat was for me. And then I worked towards it. And now we have a much easier process. If I had this when I was 20, it'd be a different story. So figure out that financial thermostat for your own life, uh, develop the, the passion and the skills to work towards it. And then if you don't have an investment vehicle that can help you do that, hit me on Instagram, D-A-R-I-K, just my first name. And like, I got you and I could show you a platform. I don't need anyone, but I'm more than willing to help everyone that, that needs it because I know what it's like not having it. There you go, folks. There you have it. Uh, Derek himself. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, man. Uh, it was yeah. awesome chopping it up with you. It's been a while, yeah. so long overdue. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. No doubt. And so, so there you have it, folks. Another amazing episode. We'll be back with you guys every Sunday. You can catch the episode on Spotify, Audible, all of the different uh, podcast platforms, as well as our YouTube channel. And you can also find us on TikTok and all that good stuff. All of it, link in the description, as well as your Instagram. And there you have it, guys. Thanks again, man. And um, yeah, that was dope. All right. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching this episode from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch other episodes, make sure to make your way to appropriateculture.com. You can also hang out with us in other social media platforms. They're all in the link in the description. And aside from that, if you want to listen to the podcast on other platforms like Audible, um, Spotify, any of those, you can also find us there as well. Link in the description. Take it easy, guys. Have a good day.